Hello, my name is Rami Al Karmi, and I'm a proud triple six birthday to Gemini. I've tried a lifetime to suppress my evil Gemini twin. My other Gemini twin is a master Jedi fanatic fan of Star Wars. I try to be myself, my best, and uh, be a loving family member to my wife, two loving kids, Masa and Kareem. Kareem, by the way, is also a Gemini. Geminis are playful, intellectually curious, constantly juggling variety of passions, hobbies, and even the friends and groups of friends. I remember my, wife, my mom always asking, when will he get a normal life? When will he get a normal job? When will he lead a normal life? I grew to some extent with this motto just because it worked in the past. A prophecy, if you may, or a mission to help people, organizations, and even nations to self-disrupt before it's too late. But I always used to get this question, isn't disrupting yourself crazy? And I used to have many techniques to tackle this until I watched the movie, The Joker, last year with this amazing quote, is it just me or is it getting crazier out there? So I kind of adopted this mantra and created another Gemini twin, the Joker Gemini twin. Of course, I've never wore makeup. This is an effect within artificial intelligence called neural style transfer. Everything I do in terms of innovation looks into a similar model of mimicking two separate images and morphing them together, just like the neural style transfer. One clearly enemy of change and disruption is fear. And there's a small part in our brains called the amygdala, which is focused on the prime function of tackling fear. That's why all news agencies focus on headlines that create fear, because then our amygdala kicks in and takes over, so, we get, so they grab our attention. We, they grab our attention. So again, the minute you step into an organization, and you start disrupting, who is really asking this question? Isn't disrupting ourselves crazy? It's the immunity system, the amygdala, the fear. They step in and try to protect mother core ship. How can we maintain status quo is what they have in mind. So again, just because it worked in the past. I, if I challenge you to answer, and name an industry that has disruption immunity, I would easily bet you that no industry has disruption immunity. We've seen the Nokia's, we've seen Kodak, we've also seen Blockbuster. Blockbuster, by the way, during 2008, recorded a, a peak revenue of $4 billion, which made their CEO on that year say that neither Redbox nor Netflix are even on their radar screen in terms of competition. Yet, next year, right after the $4 billion in revenue, they, they closed down. Everything should go. And we've all seen the story of how Netflix skyrocketed versus Blockbuster going bankrupt. Also, let's look at banks and their business models. And I would like to borrow the model, the business model canvas model by my dear friend Alex Osterwalder to describe business models of banks. So if we look at the value propositions of banks, we have two clear value propositions. Deposit solutions at lower interest, credit solutions at higher interest. Our co customer segments are super simple, depositors and borrowers. They can be companies or personal. Our revenue streams, are simply interest income, fee income, and investment returns. What do you see wrong in this picture? This has been the same business model for banks 
since the year 1472. This is a screaming alert, red alert, of a blockbuster rerun. Banks initially decided to kick off their amygdala, their fear, their immunity system against fintechs. And they said fintechs are only chomping around the fringes. But today, there's a larger threat attacking banks and the financial sector with all the tech fins, Googles, the Apples, and Facebooks, even Amazon, stepping into this space. We've seen the Apple card, we've seen the Google cash account, and many, many more ideas that are stepping into this space. So again, I've seen blockbuster reruns across many, many sectors just during my current lifetime. And this has been going on for ages. So we've seen this across telecom, where Skype and voice over IP providers killed distance, uh, long distance calls and roaming. WhatsApp killed the, the revenue coming from SMS messages. Even mobility and travel was disrupted by the Ubers and Airbnb. And uh, under the retail, we've seen how Amazon and Uber Eats and the likes disrupted the space by far. We've all seen the disruptors, be it the Amazons and the Ubers and what have you. But what really is common between the six companies that are famous for that is that none of them existed 20 years ago. None of them. So they were all born during downtimes, which is very interesting. Four years ago, I was selected to join a sm small, unique, hand-picked group at NASA called the NASA Cross-Industry Innovation Group. And during those four years, annually, we connect around 50 top executives in innovation from the Googles, the Teslas, and what have you, connect within the uh, NASA headquarters and deliver what we call Innovation X Talks, mini TED Talks, if you may. The whole concept is how would you bring the top innovation brains into a room and make sure you connect them, allow them to, def to design cross-industry innovation and borrow innovations from different industries. This group connected during the pandemic and we designed under a digital remote format a working model that allowed us to create a report that would help us tackle what COVID-19 has done. And what would we do? How can we address the realities posed by COVID-19? The report was called Never Normal. And the COVID definitely was a main, uh, put a main question mark around what is normal. So we've seen the FDA, for example, grant approvals in less than 24 hours. We've seen uh, Wuhan build a thousand bed hospital in eight days. We've seen uh, uh, Twitter, we've seen many of the Silicon Valley uh, companies tell their employees to work from home indefinitely. We've seen Zara, we've seen Microsoft, and most of the retail shops shut down and decide to permanently shut down right after the pandemic. But really, we've also seen a record in the wealth transfer. So it's not all downtime. We've seen the top wealthy billionaires accumulatively increase their net worth with 931 billion. We've also seen small businesses lose more than 200 billion collectively. So do we sit down and play the Hunger Games, or do we really, really screw business as usual? And because the new normal is abnormal, I coined a term called abnew normal that dictates a necessity of disruption, dictates a necessity to evolve our mindset and our business to be able to address the, the Hunger Game the mass disruptions taking place across most of the industries. And I put this into a book, which I'm hoping to be launched soon, released soon. And under this book, I mention a number of secrets that would allow you to survive what goes on during the abnew normal. I'll be mentioning for time's sake, I'll be mentioning only six of the top secrets presented in the book. And I start with helping you evolve your mindset, secret number one. Evolving your mindset to address what's the difference between 
the exponential and linear growth. And what does that mean? So taking it simply to the basics, the main difference between 30 steps that are linear versus 30 steps that are exponential. With the 30, with the 30 linear steps, I simply end up 30 meters away from where I started. While in under exponential steps, so if I start with one step, two steps, four steps, eight steps, and what have you, upon my 30th step, my 30th exponential step, I would turn 26 times around planet Earth. More than a million kilometers. So imagine the difference between 30 steps and 30 exponential steps. Mind-blowing, huh? So what do I do with that? One thing I really learned working with the NASA group is adopting a 10x mindset, the exponential mindset, versus a 10% mindset. And with the 10% mindset, you are likely to lose because you're basically putting yourself in direct competition with everyone else in your industry. While with the 10x mindset, you completely are trying to solve a radically hard problem and you, are, you basically approach the problem with a completely different mindset and a completely different way. The exponential growth has been fueled by Moore's law, which also exponentially grew if you look at calculating $1,000 worth of computing power, so your iPhone, for example. And we've seen how this has grown exponentially across years. This has really fueled all the technologies we've heard on the fourth industrial revolution, be it the cloud computing, nano material, artificial intelligence, blockchain, robotics, 3D printing, and what have you. So if we go back 35 years ago, if I needed to have a TV, a radio, a, a, a calculator, and many of the tools that I have today in my phone, it would actually cost me $32 million. While today, this is simply less than $900 in my pocket. And I don't, need, I don't need to carry all that around. This is the power of exponential technologies. Human adaptability grows linearly, while technology grows exponentially. And the only way to be able to adapt is to clearly shift the curve of human adaptability by learning and unlearning faster. So how do we do that? Trick number two, secret number two, your North Star. You define a meaningful progress. Some people call this their North Star, others call it their massive transformational purpose. Pick your meaningful progress and make sure it carries the mindset of abundance. So no longer focus on scarcity and what do you control in terms of assets. Number three, evolve your team. Build a black ops team. Make sure they have autonomy. They don't operate in hierarchy. Make sure you see uh, uh, shippable products, shippable results within less than a week. Have a crazy team on board. Most of my team are Geminis, by the way. Allow them with autonomy to question everything and anything and give them full autonomy to operate based on that. Make sure you don't hire based on experience. Hire based on the skill of learning, ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Build a culture that looks like a swarm. No one is CEO of swarm. No one tells the swarm, go right, go left. They all operate without thinking. And this has been built into the uh, bees when they, they actually call it the swarm intelligence and use that to design artificial swarm intelligence when they designed uh, the drones. So we put, put this into a process that allows, if you may, creating a super brain of brains. And we called it the think swarming model to allow the group to operate together in much faster approaches. Evolve your business model through business model innovation. And with that, uh, historically, if we look at transactional business models, historically, all municipalities basically built infrastructure. And they tried to monetize that through transactions. So they designed tolls, toll booths. You would arrive into the toll booth, you would pay cash. This moved gradually into contactless and cashless, like the RFID sticker that is in Dubai. They ne that never changed the business model. That's the same business model, yet digitized. So what we really need is 
a shift, a business model innovation, rethink of how you approach things. And just to build on the same analogy, you keep the same road, but you no longer focus on the transaction. You create a full, vibrant ecosystem around this road, and you basically flourish based on you and them successfully growing your businesses, i.e. introducing platforms and ecosystems. Fifth secret is evolving your approach. When I delivered my talk at NASA, my Gemini son, who is fascinated with being an astronaut and has, was crazy about his father being there at NASA and speaking to the NASA audience, asked me to question the audience, how did the, uh, Matt Damon during the movie, The Martian, how did he basically, because he spent most of the movie wandering around uh, Mars, how did he, how was he able, what was the technology that went into his suit that allowed him to sit comfortably on a min minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit rock? And the answer I got from the group was, that's only a movie. And when I asked him that, he said, I know that this, that's only a movie, but I really wanted to see if they had an idea of how to do it, because I know by the time we reach Mars, there will be a solution. And that brings me to the second point, my, my, my fifth uh, secret. And of course, the movie was shot in the marvelous uh, Wadi Ram here in Jordan. You really need to adopt an approach that all solutions are already solvable, even if you still don't know how to solve them. And that really makes a difference. My sixth and final secret for today is execute at speed. Execution at speed is driven by you making sure that you don't hesitate. So do or do not, there is no try, as Master Yudu always says. Attack and make sure you're onto stuff. So the next time someone questions your ability to disrupt, describes you with crazy, or kicks in their amygdala, simply remember the joker going down the New York's famous stairs and asking, is it just me or is it getting crazier out there? This is the abnormal normal age, and I ask you all to adopt this mindset and make sure you clearly understand how mass disruptions is inevitable your only way to survive is to evolve beyond the master games. Thank you.